are you a 3D VTuber that has maybe considered getting a 2D avatar, but maybe you're held back a little bit because you already have a lot of Venian redeems? Or maybe you're a 2D VTuber that has wanted to spice up their streams a little bit with better kind of redeems that are currently available. Today, I'm going to show you how you can use 2D Avatar inside Venian, because we have had support for this for several years already, but not a lot of people know how to do this little trick. Hi hi, it's your friendly neighborhood VTuber Suvi here again with a new Venian Basics tutorial. So today we're gonna look into one of the not so well-known features of Venian, which is the Spout2 support. And not just sending Spout2, because most of you already use that, but Venian can also receive Spout2 images that can be used in props, and this allows you to bring a 2D avatar into your 3D world. Or just have it in your Venian setup in general, and then use most of Venian's redeems with that. All you really need to have for this is, of course, your 2D VTubing application. Uh, today we're going to use VTube Studio, but you could also use Inochi Session or almost anything else as well, as long as they have Spout2 support. If they don't have Spout2, you can still send the image from OBS by using the Spout plugin for OBS, but that is a little bit more involved process and we will not cover that part today. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? So, the first step into getting your 2D avatar into Venian is to start up VTube Studio and uh, make sure that the Spout Sender is active. And you can do this in VTube Studio by going to the settings and then in the settings go to the camera icon up here and then scroll all the way down until you found the Spout2 config. Now, you may need to click the install button if you have not done this before, and then make sure to activate it. And once you've done that, then VTube Studio should already start sending the spout image, or more like it should start sharing the spout image at that point. And the next step is then to configure Venian to actually show your avatar there. And we can do this by launching up Venian first. Now, once you're in Venian, you will need to load up an invisible avatar. Now, you may ask, why do you need an avatar? Uh, the reason is Venian is still meant for 3D programs and uh, all our colliders are based on the avatar file you have loaded. So simply click the load avatar button and then go to the installation directory where you installed Venian there should be a directory called 2D Avatar Files. And inside that folder, there should be a file called invisavatar.vsfavatar. And as you can see here, we are in the Vinion installation folder and then the 2D avatars, and there we have invisavatar. So let's load that. Now, when you load it, nothing will actually show up. And this is, of course, because the avatar is invisible. Okay, so now that you have the invisible avatar loaded, the next step for us is to load a Spout2 prop. And you can do this easily by going to the props window and then select load from file. We have prepared a couple ready-made props that work with VTube Studio as well as Inochi Session. So you can click the add prop and then simply find the VTube Studio prop file or the Inochi Session prop and click open. And now you should already instantly see your avatar move. Or at least you should see it in Vinion. The next step is to scale the image to the correct size. And you can do this by selecting the scale from the transform mode and then simply dragging here until you're happy with the result, like so. Now, if you want to remove this movement which Vinion may have enabled by default, go to the menu, then go to the settings, tracking effects, and disable the breathing mode. Especially if you already have this toggled on in VTube Studio. Next you can hide the gizmo. Okay, 
So now you have your avatar in Vinyan. And as you can see, it is a flat plane like this. You may not always want this result, so you can also select always face camera. In which case, no matter how you rotate the camera, the avatar will always face, face correctly. Okay, next step for us is to configure the colliders. It is best done without having the always face camera on. Just click the colliders button. And now you can click the show colliders. And now you will want to adjust all these colliders so that they suit the specific avatar. So you can do something like this. Like so. And then you can hide the colliders again. Now, what do these colliders do is they allow you to utilize certain effects in Vinyan that require colliders like yeet or all the liquid effects. Now, I have attached this avatar currently to the head bone. Uh, this will get a lot of flinch when objects are thrown, so you could also link your avatar to the hips. If you do change this, however, you will have to reconfigure the colliders. As you can see, the avatar moves to a different spot. And of course, this means that the colliders will be off. So just keep that in mind. Like so. And now you could basically start making redeems in Vinyan. A simple redeem to test would be to throw some items at your avatar. And if you're completely new to Vinyan, simply open up the node graph and add a channel point redeem and link it to, for example, throw item redeem, like so. And now you connect this yellow or brownish socket to the green one, like so. And then you can select what item to throw, how many items to throw. And then you can right click on this channel point node and send signal. And as you can see, an item is thrown. Now there was no flinch currently, and that is because we did set our avatar to the hips. If you want a flinch, then you can, of course, set it to the head bone that we did earlier as well. Alternatively, you could use upper chest, which might not get quite as much flinch as the head does. But let's try with the head real quick. And now, as you can see, there is a flinch when an item hits. And that's how easy it is to get your avatar into Vinyan. I hope this tutorial was useful for you. And remember that you can indeed also make other Spout2 props by selecting the Spout2, the built-in Spout2 prop from the prop window. So this allows you to use it with applications that may not otherwise support Spout. However, it does use a different shader than the props we prepared in the 2D avatar files folder. So you may have to figure out some settings for the background transparency. So you may need a chroma key or something, but it's still relatively simple to set it up. Anyway, if you have any questions you would like to answer during these Vinyan Basics tutorials, feel free to write it down in the comments. I will definitely cover it later on. Anyway, cuties, see you next time. Bye-bye!